2021, what a year it's been. For electric cars, of course. A few years ago, you could easily count the annual release of EVs on, well, both hands, but everything has changed and it's getting harder to keep up with it all. We're even starting to see some new automaker kids on the block. So in case you missed them, let me run you through some potentially lesser known EVs set to hit the market in 2022. But before we go any further, please do make sure to hit that like button, like this video, give us some support, hit that subscribe button as well if you haven't already, and check out our Instagram at Electroheads. Right, let's get to it. <laughs> First up, we are taking a trip to the land of Oz, Australia. Now, we all know that the sales of EVs down under have been bad, like really bad. And Rich goes into this perfectly in his video right up here, so make sure to check it out. But it's recently been reported that the momentum seems to be growing. So it was only a matter of time before a homegrown Aussie EV group wanted to take on, well, its own country. Introducing to you Ace EV. Click on their website and you see they have four different electric vehicles available, which all do deserve a place here. But I want to focus on one in particular, the Ace Ute. Awesome, dusty Ute, you know that. Yeah, not spelt like the Australian UTE that you would think they would do, but um, a different kind of spelling. Uh, if you don't know what that is, I guess feel free to Google it, but I don't know what the hell they were thinking. Names aside, this is a cool compact electric pickup and is scheduled to roll out of an Adelaide factory early next year. So what do you think? First impressions, comment down below and bear with me here, but the Ute to me, kind of like an Australian cousin, maybe third cousin to our much loved X-Bus from Germany. Okay, slightly clutching at straws here, but you kind of get what I mean? In fact, the Ace range was actually designed in Germany and Taiwan, and you can really see the mesh between German functionality and that Asian bubbly look. Less though can be said about the Kangaroo logo. Come on guys, let's just pick it up a little bit. So what do you get? Well, the Ute has been built as a commercial vehicle in mind and touted as a perfect accompaniment for couriers, florists, or even government agencies. ASIO 007, here we come, I guess. The Ute has a lightweight body made from high strength sandwich type composite material, which can carry around 500 kilograms and is the same weight as a grand piano or a dromedary camel. Okay. It has a maximum speed of 100 kilometers an hour, a not to 50 kilometers an hour in under seven seconds, and has a range of 150 to 200 kilometers under partial load. Okay, so it's not the nippiest, but surely you don't want to be doing any more when you've got your spy camel in the back. No, but seriously, I've seen worse on electric cars. And the price ain't too bad either, as electric cars go. For the basic model, that's going to set you back around 26,000 Australian US dollars. You can even reserve one right now for the measly price of 299 Australian US dollars. At this point, you're probably wondering whether or not they will be available outside of Oz. Well, Ace know that they can't rely on the Australian market for survival. So they've got exclusive global RHD assembly and manufacturing rights. So a few thousand will be sold in Australia and the rest will be shipped and built overseas. Let's head on to car number two. <laughs> Have you heard of the Fisker Ocean? This is a new all-electric SUV and is the brainchild of co-founder and CEO Henrik Fisker, best known in the car world for styling the BMW Z8 Roadster. Well, he is back and this time with his own company and a more eco-friendly product to boost. And even though I'm not really into SUVs, I want one. I want one, I want a- Fisker Ocean. We're not short of premium electric SUVs in the market, but the Ocean does stand out from the crowd. I really like the look of this car with nice little details like the continuous front light band with light up Ocean branding. It just looks cool. Downtown Coolsville. For the interior, they've gone to town with sustainable materials, recycled plastic bottles, abandoned fishing nets from the ocean and worn out shirts make up the tapestry of the self-proclaimed world's most sustainable SUV on earth. Big claims there guys, although it sounds like the inside is gonna be more like some kind of scene of a shipwreck. I think it looks great. Yeah. Great. There's even a full length solar sky roof that can generate energy from the sun's rays and feed it directly back into the car. Now Fisker claims this alone can produce up to 1,500 miles a year. In California, perhaps, but in the UK, oh, probably not. But 
every little helps, right? Some other cool features includes parking assist with ultrasonic sensors and limo mode for your backseat passengers to have full control of their temperature, fan and volume settings. You can even use the ocean as a power source should there be a temporary energy outage that can apparently power your entire home for up to seven days. Bearing in mind the battery that's going to be kitted out with this is at least 80 kilowatt hours and apparently the average UK home uses about 10 kilowatts of hours. hours? <laughs> 10 kilowatt hours, so I'm guessing the American home might use a little bit more than that. So seven days, could be true. The entry level Ocean Sports will have a range of 250 miles and front wheel drive maxing at 275 horsepower. Meanwhile, higher end Ocean models will offer 340 miles of range and the Extreme and One Launch Edition models both will have 350 miles of range per charge. It's gonna be built in Austria and Fisker has big plans with this being one of five models expected by 2025. So keep your eyes peeled for more. You can reserve your very own for a $250 deposit, but this SUV won't be available to purchase in the US until the end of 2022. For us Brits, don't expect to see anything until the second quarter of 2023. I'll smash you! <laughs> If you haven't heard of VinFast, you're not alone. The company is barely four years old and is largely unknown outside of its home country, Vietnam, and has so far only produced cars built through licenses from BMW and General Motors. But all of that is about to change. Say hello to the VinFast VF E35 and VF36, two battery electric crossovers introduced at this year's LA Motor Show. The E35 is a compact sport cute with a 86 kilowatt hour battery which claims to be good for about 285 miles, whilst the larger E36 is a mid-sized sport utility packing a decent 90 kilowatt hour battery that can deliver around 310 miles. Bloody hell! The two models are primed to go head to head with the VW ID4 and Tesla Model Y, all pretty similar in their offerings. However, these new lines will be available in the US and Europe and possibly the UK. Looks wise, they look like any other SUV, but that's okay. We don't need groundbreaking new designs. We just need options, ideally cheaper, but it's not been confirmed how much they're going to cost. The ex-Opal CEO, Michael Loschlella, is that the right word? <laughs> Loschlella? Loschlella. Loschlella. Said the company wants to make sure it gets its brand positioned properly first. So that one's a TBC, as is his surname. I'll let you know right now. <laughs> but to help encourage adoption of an unknown brand, both models will come with a 10 year warranty that covers the battery as well. Kia, eat your heart out, that eight year warranty. That's been topped, mate. <laughs> From the ground up, the two models will both be built on platforms engineered, developed and manufactured by VinFast. There's been a serious injection of money into this upstart thanks to the Vin Group conglomerate founded by Vietnam's now richest man. Five billion US dollars has already been thrown into the pot with goals to soon be manufacturing as many as 250 thousand cars a year. And Lord knows, Hanoi needs some EVs on its streets after ranking as one of the most polluted cities in Southeast Asia. Pre-orders for both cars will be open in the first half of next year, focusing on California first with delivery scheduled for Q4 2022. Expect to see showrooms pop up across the US and Canada, as well as charging points aplenty. It's all in the works. And if your car ever needs servicing, they'll either send somebody to your house or they'll give you a loan car for a heftier repair. It all sounds very promising. They can talk the talk, but can they walk the walk? They've got some huge automakers to contend with, so watch the space. Next on my list, we have a well-known automaker that is taking their very well-known compact car and making it bigger. Another manufacturer jumping on the SUV hype? Oh, what a surprise. Because you're all basically the same person. Well, Smart has revealed a small SUV concept car that makes its debut at this year's Munich Motor Show that is tipped to be on sale by, well, you guessed it, 
2022. There's actually a bit of a mixed reportage going on whether or not it's going to be 22 or 23, but I'm a glass half full kind of girl, so here's the 2022. And it's their first EV coming to market, which will be heralded as a new era for the brand. Smart has relaunched under joint ownership with Daimler and Geely, and so it looks like this new lease of life is taking the city cars in a different direction. Geely will be managing the engineering side, whilst Mercedes will be in charge of the design. Looking at the exterior, I feel confused. The nose looks hitchy compared to the body. It's like they've got the liquify tool in Photoshop and just held it for a touch too long. The interior, however, I am here for. Check out the plush white and gold, the floating consoles, the strip lighting and panoramic sunroof. There's even touch sensitive light panels rather than handles. I love a white interior, so basic, but it is so, so me. I mean, yeah, like, what can I say? I'm a basic bitch. But mums are gonna love it too. Imagine your mum picking you up from school with your mate in this car. Oh my God, what a hun. But what about performance? Well, entry level models will offer an 86 kilowatt hour battery, which can provide more than 300 miles of range. And that is just entry level. The range topping spec will have a 100 kilowatt hour battery that could reach a ginormous 434 miles. That is more than the Tesla Model 3 long range, than BMW iX, an extended long range Mustang Mach-E. You get the picture. Now, pricing wise, it's not been confirmed, but rumors are that some versions could start from just below 35,000 pounds, allowing buyers to make use of the 2,500 pound electric vehicle grant. Now, the range topper could be somewhere more like 45,000 pounds, but with all that tech and range involved, that is an incredible price compared to its competitors. They're a smart bunch. <laughs> Next up, we are upscaling to a retro looking modern day microbus. It is the ID Buzz. Volkswagen has been teasing us with camouflage pictures of this much anticipated electric edition of a 1950s cult classic. Now it's due for UK sale in the second half of 2022. The Buzz will be the fourth dedicated electric model for VW following the ID3, 4 and 5. There's gonna be two options available to purchase with standard and long range wheelbase options, although the latter won't be available until 2023. Technical details of the Buzz still haven't been announced, but the battery and drivetrain are expected to be that of the IDs. We anticipate to see single and dual motor versions with an output of up to 200 horsepower. Battery wise, there will most likely be a few options varying from 48 kilowatt hours up to 100 kilowatt hours so that could deliver around 342 miles. Again, it's all speculation, so sit tight. This vehicle is going to be an ode to the old, but also a trailblazer for the brand. Volkswagen will be launching the Buzz with autonomous driving technology that will deliver level two functionality. Now, this isn't anything new in the car world, but it is the start of VW's developed tech in partnership with Argo AI, which they hope will bring them up to level four capabilities by 2025, which basically means the car can drive itself and intervene if something goes wrong. However, humans can still manually override it. Do you like it? Don't you? Let me know down below. There's pros and cons for sure, which we can touch on in another video. Why don't you kick off the conversation for us? But for now, let's move on to car number six. So for car number six, we have the one, the only, AuraCat. Now, it sounds like a potential for a Marvel superhero lineup, but in fact, this is a Chinese electric car that will rival the Fiat 500e, the Mini Electric, and VW ID3. It has an official range of up to 261 miles, and the clincher is, it's gonna be priced from around 25,000 pounds. Now, that is a serious bit of competition for the sticker price, and even better, the AuraCat qualifies for the government grant as it's under 35K, an added bonus but that's not where it ends. The performance figures and efficiency really look to outshine its key rivals. There'll be a couple of options for battery size, a 58 kilowatt hour edition that will give around 206 miles of range and a bigger 63 kilowatt hour battery that that is probably gonna cost more like 28,000 pounds. Now remember the Mazda MX-30, which I reviewed in this video right here, a great little car that costs around the same price, 
but has half the amount of range. Now, range is a big deal for people, and the Aura Cat is proof that you can get a car with decent range that isn't upwards of £40,000. Performance wise, the Aura Cat with a front mounted motor packs a decent 169 brake force power and 250 newton meters of torque, delivering a 0 to 62 miles per hour in 8.5 seconds and a top speed of 100 miles per hour. China's not yet been able to make a mark on the Western car market, but by the looks of it, all of that could be about to change. Its versatility and flexibility make this a big sell, especially to those who are teetering on the edge of going electric. So where has this Aura Cat sprung up from? Its creator, Great Wall Motors, is a bit of a beanock over in its hometown. GWM is not only an automobile manufacturer, it's also an industry leader and pioneer in research and development for technologies. Their scope into all things tech has been transplanted onto the Aura, naturally. It packs touch control, an exclusive intelligent driving platform, as well as a facial recognition that can adjust seats, entertainment system, and navigation accordingly. Sales for this electric hatchback will be kicking off imminently this month, with deliveries beginning in the first half of 2022. All right, on to the final car for today. Last and not least, I have for you the MG Super Mini, an electrified hatchback molded from its ICE sibling, the MG3. Earlier this year, there were reports of this car making its debut sometime in 2022, but unlike a lot of other cars coming to fruition, we've really not heard much more. But one press release will change all of that, and MG is gearing up with an ambitious growth plan aiming for annual sales of up to 1 million cars by 2024, which will mark their 100th year anniversary, by the way. Happy birthday. We've seen the MG5 and ZS. There's even going to be an electric sports coupe, the E-Motion, which I think looks well nice. However, the electric MG Super Mini is still a bit of an unknown. Currently, there only seems to be this one image of the concept. Huge apologies to our editor, who is probably scraping the barrel right now for cutaways on this one. <laughs> but obviously, there's not much to go off. But initially, it looks well, like racer boy in its design and I'm here for it. <sighs> There's a lot of speculation about the stats on this one, but the new model is expected to adopt the battery and powertrain technology from MG's other EVs. However, the Super Mini is going to be, well, small. So the battery capacity will probably be smaller than the ZS's 45.5 kilowatt hour spec to account for interior space, but also cost. Expect to range around 150 miles, which makes this car a solid choice for the urban commuters. But how much is it going to cost you? Well, bearing in mind the ZS starts from just over 25k, the value focus of MG's lineup is all about bringing you competitive pricing. MG is said to be targeting a starting sticker price of... <laughs> less than 20,000 pounds. Oh yes, making this hatchback significantly cheaper than its rivals such as Honda Re and the Mini Electric. If that is the case, that's going to get a lot of people talking. There you have it, seven electric cars that are tipped to hit the market in 2022. So let me know down in the comments if any of these were a new find for you, or if there's any other lesser known gems I might have missed, please do make sure to give them a shout out because I want to see them. If you did enjoy this video, go on and give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you are a newbie and also go and follow us over on Instagram at Electroheads. See you soon.